My 105.9. Hey, it's Don McLean. Don McLean. Hello, I'm Willie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Willie. Thank you for calling in this morning. My pleasure. Um, my pleasure, totally. This is, uh, this is really great, man. I've, I've been a fan of yours for a lot of years. Thank you. You were just recently here in Billings. Yeah, we had a great time. I think uh, New Year's Eve. That's right. New Year's Eve at the Alberta Bear Theater. Unfortunately, I, I missed that show. I, I got it was... driven around and saw the place. I love, I love the West, you know, so it was really quite a thrill. Well, it sounds like they love you here. I heard it was an incredible show. Oh, great. You've got some big things happening with uh, PBS right now. Right. I think you've already aired the show, um, but I think it's going to be shown again on March 16th at 8 p.m. Yep, yep. It's the American Troubadour uh, documentary fundraiser, and uh, we're going to actually enlarge that to 90 minutes, and it's going to go around to film festivals and oh, very cool. all over the world. Because, you know, I, I've been traveling the world since I started in, this, in 1970. right. Well, let's talk about that. Was Last year would have been the 40th anniversary of American Pie, correct? Correct. And from what I understand, you invented that term. Yes. I don't, I don't know that America, anybody ever, ever used that, that phrase before you, correct? No. That's amazing. Can, you, can we talk about this song for just a couple of minutes? Yes. I'm sure you probably talk well, about I the song. Well, I invented the song, too. You know? <laughs> that, in, in a way, songwriters are inventors in Absolutely. a sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the song, I mean, blew up. That was really only your second album, right? Yes, and it was such a phenomenon that it really almost stopped my career because people kept saying, you know, writers, oh, he'll never top it, he'll never top it, he can't do any better than this, you know. So it was like the peak before, you know, I did anything else. So uh -huh. it was difficult uh, for a while, but then I realized that... Um, you know, I had my life ahead of me, and I wanted to write a lot of other songs, and I really didn't think about whether or not something else I did would be a phenomenon. I knew it, it wouldn't, but I, I tried to do good work, and um, so hopefully some of that comes through in the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly have done good work 40 years later, and you're still out there touring, you're still putting out albums. Uh, what, what was the last album you put out? It's about, I think it was a couple of years ago, called Addicted to Black. Right, okay. How many albums have you released? Well, if you count uh, live albums and stuff, close to 30, I guess. Wow. That's amazing. Of course, uh, this uh, American Troubadour on PBS was uh, produced and directed by Jim Brown, who also did the Pete Seeger one. Right. And uh, the Weavers, too. Right. right? Now, do, you're, you're kind of... Uh, I don't want to say like lumped in, but you kind of grew up around with those guys, well, right? Started no, out with? I didn't really. Uh, I came from Westchester County, which was a an upper class, uh, I would say. It wasn't blue collar for sure. Um, suburb of uh, New York. And um, I fell in love with the Weavers' music when I was a teenager. Okay. But I also was in love with a lot of rock and roll and a lot of other things. But it seemed like the folk thing that was happening in the, you know, and it reached me, you know, in the late 1950s, it was happening a lot longer than that, but I wasn't aware mm -hmm. of it. Um, this was a, in my mind, this was my ticket. Uh, if I could learn to play guitar, I knew I could sing pretty well, or thought I could. And I thought maybe I could, you know, get on stage. And, and all of a sudden, this whole thing happened with, coffee houses and everybody was start started playing guitars so it became easier to figure out how to do this whereas before there weren't that many people doing this and certainly nobody in New Rochelle, you know mm -hmm. where i came from so uh, i worked i decided that i wanted to get to know the weavers and i called them on the phone when i was 14 15 years old i'd i'd have a, i'd be home alone one day and i think well, i wonder if i can get you know Fred Hellerman on the telephone. You know, I heard he lives in New York, so I'd call up wow. and he'd answer the phone. I said, to, so, so tell me something. Can I ask you some things about your guitar? You know, <laughs> <laughs> and we're still friends today. I talked to him yesterday. Wow, that's amazing. And so that's how I got into the music business. You well, know, the the Weavers, uh, and I, I and I got to know them all, and I love them all, and um, and. And, and and Jim used to hang around Lee Hayes, who was, you know, the bass singer in the Weavers. Okay. And, 
he was retired at that point. And um, I would come down and visit Lee because I knew him from years before in the early 60s when mm -hmm. this whole phone thing started. <laughs> and uh, so they made the movie about the Weavers. And then years and years later, couple, like last year, he, he asked me to do some additional stuff for a, a CD release of that film. And he said, do you want to do a movie? And I said, yes, I do. I think it's time. I've been around a long time, and and I want people out there to know all about me and how these songs got written and why they're not like everybody else's songs. Yeah, absolutely. We're really looking forward to it. I want to ask you something. I heard a, a story, maybe it's just a rumor, that uh, earlier in your career that you actually, or even kind of before your career, that you had got offered maybe a scholarship or something to a college but turned it down to become a coffee house singer. Is that true? Yeah, well, I got a, I went back I quit school in 1964 and I spent a year traveling around and playing in these little coffee houses and meeting all these kids, you know, most of them were married, had kids and they lived in vans. And uh, I decided I didn't want to do that, so I went back to college and also I wasn't very good, you know, mm -hmm. and I went back to school and I was decided, well, I've, I'll spend a few years and maybe you know, graduate from college, and then we'll see what happens. So I actually did quite well in school and got into graduate school at Columbia University for a master's in business. Wow. And I said, nah, I don't want to do that. I, wanna, I don't want to do what I set out to do. Uh -huh. And uh, by gum, that's what I've done. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I did it. You know, I wouldn't have wanted to do anything else. And <clears throat> besides, you know, I, oh, that college came in very handy. It was also wonderful, even if it hadn't come in handy, but it was, uh, and it's important that people have interests, you know, sure. and I learned a lot of things to be interested in that, that were not music. So that was good. Killing me softly with his song. That song is, uh, is written about you. Well, that's the story Lori Lieberman tells, um, about seeing me at the Troubadour, uh, in the 1970s. And, um, and, singing a song called Empty Chairs, okay. which is on the American Pie album, mm -hmm. and it's also on this Time Life set. Time Life will be promoting and releasing the DVD of American Troubadour and a double CD of 30 tracks from different albums. Oh, so wow. They will be promoting that. Um, there's also going to be a big coffee table book that's coming out as well, uh, russcochran.com. People can find out about that. Real died in the wolf fans, if there are any who would like to have the last word in Don McLean, you can. That's cool stuff. You're certainly not slowing down later in your career, are you? Well, I've decided to try to. I'm, I'm going to be 67 this year, and I decided to quit when I'm 70. So really, I want to travel, and and, and if things are going great, I'll quit when I'm 75. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You but, uh, you know, you never know when your voice will go or your hearing will go or your sight will go or something, which will make it really difficult to do this. So right. I'm very thankful for um, for every concert I'm able to sing and all the appearances and all this good stuff happening. It's really been wonderful. And I did love Billings. I really loved it out there. I thought it was terrific. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, one more question. I just sort of have a, a, a wondering about uh, your... Um, connection with Vincent Van Gogh is there? We'll, we'll get into that a little bit with. You've well, obviously there's, written. There's no connection really, other than the fact that I read about him when I was a young fellow, and okay. I decided that no one had ever written a song about him. And 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 but anyway, okay, that's fine. But then I had this brainstorm of writing the song using the um, images from his most famous painting. And okay. that sort of caused the song to write itself. And really, it would never have gotten anywhere if American Pie hadn't been so big and, and people were focused on it. And it came out after American Pie and got mm -hmm. and it did extremely well all over the world. But, you know, it was a ballad, and they had been used to kind of a rollicking kind of rock and roll song for me to sure. begin with. But, that, but that's the thing that's that's interesting about the movie, and that's why the movie... I wanted the movie to be made because I do, you know, so many different kinds of things. Most of them are not commercial. I don't seek commercial success. Right. But a few things have crept out and become 
very commercial, but really they come from a whole point of view that I wanted people to understand, which is why we made the movie. Well, we're looking forward to the movie. It's going to air again next Friday night, the 16th of March, 8 o'clock on our PBS here. Uh, and Don McLean, it's been a, a pleasure. Thank you very much for taking your time and uh, talking well, with me Well, thank you today. very much. Hopefully you come back to Billings again before you decide wait. to throw in the towel on us. I really mean it. All I'm right, looking sir. forward to coming back. Thank you much. Bye-bye.